at TVC News. Wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. <laughs> there are two ways to look at this. The fact that, oh, there is a COVID-19 regulation yes. and everyone has to be responsible. Yeah. You can't blame them after all. I mean, it's been a troublesome year for them. Uh, it's been a crazy year. Uh, People so just wanted to unwind. They want to unwind, yes. <laughs> but yeah. they say, don't unwind and then lose your life in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk security for a bit. Uh, for you, which would you say was or is the biggest security challenge in 2020? Hmm. I've never thought of it that way. Um, I've seen the conglomeration of security issues that face the country. Uh, but I will say that um, in 2020 is the year where Nigeria found itself attacked from all angles. All angles. Northwest, uh, southeast, uh, everywhere. Whereby um, we have banditry kidnapping going on, uh, insurgency and terrorism mm. going on, and then, of course, militancy and piracy also going on uh, in the Niger Delta. Economic was, economy was very bad. So uh, we have a lot of a conglomeration of security threats that faced us uh, like never before. Do you think that it got bad this year? Because I've heard people say, oh, insecurity, you know, perhaps is one of the biggest challenges Nigeria was faced with in the outgoing year. But um, can you think of any year that was better than 2020? Uh, well, I would say that uh, in this particular year, there were new introduction mm. of new things that came into play. You know, we had, uh, of course, uh, you know, before we had a Fulani and uh, Fulani and herdsmen clash. That's right. Uh -huh. That one now developed into bandits. Yeah. You know, and then of course we have uh, Boko Haram, which now uh, got together with Iswap. You know, and then of course, despite the amnesty, we still have Niger Delta militants who are even still working on the pipelines. Uh, we wasted about a hundred thousand barrels a day, you know, which is not even, which is more than what some countries get in a day. So for us to be just uh, losing that every day will affect our economy for sure. I understand that it's not the first time we're hearing, you know, news of abduction in Nigeria. We've had the Chibok. Um, there was also, I mean, there were there are quite a number of them that we have seen in the past. But when you wake up and then you read the news and they tell you 344 students, you know, were taken away. And then you just want to think about the numbers. How were they conveyed? Some said they were yes. on motorcycles. Yes. I mean, was there any security infrastructure at all in that place? I want us to start, you know, thinking of, do, have we been able to identify as a country what the problem is? They say, when you know what the problem is and then your problem is a bit so 50 percent do we know the source because many people have postulated you know unemployment bad economy religion politics have we been able to identify by intelligence and data what the problem really is oh we know the problem we know the problem and uh, we've tried to define the problem uh but i don't know whether we're defining it properly with an aim of solving it. Because when you know the problem, of course 50% is solved. But uh, these are problems that have been with us for years. And uh, we've not been able to have a handle on them, you know, whereby they persist. And then of course we keep on losing people. Because I, I honestly, I, I, I don't expect the Kankara uh, boys uh, kidnap to happen at all. You know, we have uh, Chibok, and then uh, when Chibok happened, uh, bring back our girls, people were shouting, and then of course, in the economic forum, the World Economic Forum, they came up with these uh, safe school initiatives, you know, where, of course, terrorism prevention initiative, where, you know, there were specific, uh, you know, steps to be taken mm. to safeguard schools in Nigeria, not only in the north, everywhere in the country. and. Nobody, nobody even cared about it. I know, I'm, a secure, I, I'm, in this, I'm in the security profession. You know, there are private schools that, you know, we, we uh, try to contact to see if we can put this in place for them. 
Yeah. None of them were interested because some of them were even thinking, oh, that is a, they are Borno State. It won't happen here in Lagos, mm -hmm. you know. It won't happen in uh, Abuja, you know, and stuff like that. So there is this self-denial uh, with Nigerians that are going on, and we couldn't be, able, we are not able to catch it properly. You know, it is the reckless abandon with which these things happen. Yes. You mentioned the Kankara boys, and then less than eight days after, Another there were some one. eighty. Islamiyad boys, I mean, students that were also kidnapped, and yes. then thankfully we got them back. It's okay, so the good news I had um, some, some council of um, governors, I mean, some politicians wrote a fine speech and said the fact that the Kankara boys were brought back mm -hmm. was a plus for the president and the presidency. And I said, well, we can choose to look at it that way. The other way to look at it is. How did they even get abducted in the first place? But when 344 were abducted in the same state, and then a few days down the line, there's another, another news. One. What does it say? Because we, we saw the IDP go there and then perhaps trying to talk to all of the units. But the IDP cannot be everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going on? As a security professional, I don't want to personalize security. Mm. You know, although I know that um, uh, most security agents, agencies, you know, have this uh, knack of uh, trying to ensure, which I was part of, you know, secure um, regime protection. Yeah. Uh, but that is not the issue right now. As a security professional, the way I see it is a situation where Nigerians are safe. Yeah. It's not even guns. It's not guns and boots but a situation where strategies are put in place where people feel safe, you know, without even seeing a single soldier or policeman carrying a gun, but you feel you are safe, you know. And that's the situation, that's the security environment that I want, you know. Um, people going to say, oh, uh, let's give the credit to this person or that person, I think it's uncalled for, because we're talking of Nigerian lives. You know, we're talking of Nigerian lives. We have people whose throats were slit, farmers whose throats were slit, and those people, we don't even think about them anymore. Yeah. And we don't even know their names. Yeah. Uh, there is no cenotaph where we put up to remember those people, that these are Nigerians who suffered and died for this country, you know. And uh, even soldiers, people in the military, well, we, we have a lot of them uh, dying, ambushed, killed. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know their names. Why don't we know their names, at least? So that we can honor them, you know, uh, until we bring our mindset away from, you know, um, uh, satisfying politicians, let me put it that way, because mm -hmm. I, I want to see it as a situation where uh, we are running a democracy. The country is for all of us, and then the people in this country, and we also, as people, should also be part of that security issue. Information management is also key. Uh, how does the government respond when things like this happen? And um, what is the source of accurate information? And yes. the Kankara boys, for instance, a particular government official mentioned that there were just 10 students <laughs> abducted. And yeah. you begin to also look at the implication of that on the trust that the people have, you know, uh, on, in, in their government yes. and in the leadership. Let's talk about, and that's just one part of it. Following the Kankara story, there were also very divisive um, reactions. So mm. the police says, oh, we were the one who got them. And then the soldiers came up and said, no, no, it was. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. You, and then you look at these things, you wonder... Where did we get it wrong? We got it wrong right from the beginning. Mm. Because, see, it's how the security agencies were created. They were both all created to take care of the colonial masters. Mm. And when the colonial masters left, the new masters were the politicians. And since that day, we've never shifted our loyalty from them. You know, so we're all there trying to satisfy them, you know. We, we want to run down to the president and tell him, I did it, you know. It was not me for me that did it. I did it, you know, so that the credit come to me. It's not we did it, mm. you know. Uh -huh. It's a community. The security community should be able to go to the president and say that uh, the chief of, uh, uh, commander-in-chief, we have done it, 
you know, and that's that's the level I want Nigerian security to operate now. But now you find a situation where police will go. And, we did it. Uh, others, governors are even saying this is another set of human beings that I think are giving us problem in this country. You know, they want they don't want to take responsibility. You know, and all these things are happening in states. I, well, I should uh, congratulate, or should I say, I admire uh, Governor Zulu, who is trying to do something about it, mm -hmm. more than any other governor, you know, whereby... At least it's on-site. I mean, yeah, see, he's right on there, the he's trying mm -hmm. to find solutions, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what they should be doing. We cannot be calling on the president every time that something happens. You know, there's a local government chairman. Where are they? You know, and we run this three tier of government, and uh, some people are just sitting back and waiting for the president or the uh, the army or police to come and do what they are supposed to do. Um, people should be forming the vigilante groups or That's some it. kind of groups ar around their town. Mm -hmm. You know, to say, okay, now this is our town. These, these bandits are just, or, you know, rascal boys that have gone into the bush. Let us wait for them. Or let's, let's take, take, take it to them and then make sure that uh, we deal with them. But um, we, are, we are just sitting back and folding our hands and waiting for me, you know, from super camp to come and help us, you know. And the super camp idea is not a very good one, you know, where you find out that the whole ungoverned spaces are there and why the super camp is there and then of course the the, the terrorists will know where the super camp is and they go around and attack those places yeah. chibok has been attacked after the chibok girls kidnapped it has been attacked many times over yeah. you know because they know that nobody is there you know in the heat of all of these you know there were public conversations and there were this there was this cry to restructure the security infrastructure we heard about state police yeah. the amoteco you know came up in the southwest um, how sustainable is is this initiative and given the track record of lack of collaboration <coughs> excuse me among security agencies do you see it meeting this particular need and solving this problem? Well, uh, firstly, I think the security agencies have got to come together. That's one. Then number two, um, you know, when you don't come together to give the people adequate security, then they start looking for self-help. Mm. You know, it's just like you in your house. You know that uh, armed robbers usually come to, he, to invade homes, yeah. And uh, the police will not come if you call them. So what do you do? Do you leave your house and run away? You stay there and look for whether you are having a big market or a baseball bat or whatever. Mm. You know, you want to now stay there and wait for them. let them come. That means self-help is very, very key to our personal security. So um, this is something that should have been done earlier. Let the regions or the state, you know, neighborhood watches, uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, because if the government, the government is dragging their feet about state policing. The whole idea of state policing is to bring policing down to the grassroots, you know, whereby the people in local government, they know their sheriff, he knows them by name. And then, of course, crime is committed around that area. I should be able to get it. Information will come to him. Mm. Uh -huh. But when you bring, uh, say, a Yoruba guy and take him to uh, Ikodansa in, in uh, Cross River State, and then you now start to, uh, you now start, first of all, he doesn't understand the language. He wants to find his feet. And he wants to do one or two things to, to know the people. Uh, and it becomes a problem for him, basically. So why don't we review that structure, re-strategize, and see the kind of police that the 200, more than 200 million people in this country will desire? Yeah. Are we, are we, are we, what kind of police do we really want? You know, it's not a matter of uh, this is what they give to us. We are a sovereign nation, we should be able to find out what we really need. They said the morale of the police was dealt a huge blow after Matt the NSAS protest. And I saw it in Lagos, the number of days it took to yeah. get their prisoners back on the street. But what was that morale like before the NSAS protest? The and morale of the police have always been low mm. because, you know, they are not enough. They are totally overstretched. They are not well funded. 
They don't have much uh, equipment to work with. Uh, it's the state governments that are buying them uh, Hilux, Hilux jeeps to go and do whatever they want to do. Mm. So you find out that their morale, the basic morale of the policeman is very low in Nigeria. And it has affected him in such a way that he's not very proud of his work. A study was conducted and they were asking policemen whether they will allow their children yeah. to enlist in the police in the force. Police. And about almost 90% said no. Wow. Because they cannot see their children come to go through what they are going through. So it's a situation where you want to um, restructure that police. But how and did give, we... them, give them some kind of mm. uh, sense of belonging and dignity yes so that they will, they will be proud of you know of what they are doing and uh, stop taking bribe from people and uh, you know 20 20 naira or 100 naira on the streets yeah. and, and be and just be there to enforce the laws of this country i'm sure nobody will collect 20 naira from you today so Stop saying 20 naira. Well, if you... Whoever is collecting prep has evolved from 20 naira. <laughs> long time ago, very long time ago. But let's yeah. talk about their operation and how a whole security infrastructure was overwhelmed by a national protest. I mean, um, a situation where it would appear that our uniformed men can do nothing without ammunition. You know, when you, when you watch movies, there's how you police riot. Yeah. You know, helmet, water cannons, tear gas. It just appears that the moment you ask a policeman not to shoot, it becomes powerless. Or yeah. am I, is it just an assumption? Or what do you think? It's is not an realize? assumption. It's a result or a product of lack of training. Lack of training. I can tell you that very, very well. I know when I was director in the, state, in the service when I was there, you know, we discovered that for the trained staff, who have been there for more than a year, two, three. You know, if they're going on operation and they encounter any problem, they solve the problem. Mm. For new staff, who have been there for maybe six months or a year, when they encounter a problem, the first thing they do is to whip out their ID card and show people that I am from the SSS. Mm. What's the difference? Because he feels that the ID card is the power he has, you know? But the more experienced ones, they know that, you know, I can deal with this situation and I don't have to identify myself mm. because some of them are undercover anyway, mm. you know? So this is the difference whereby a lot of these people, when they are not trained, and when, when, when we say training, we also mean continuous training. Absolutely. Because I remember, if you, are, if you are an operative, you go every two months or so, depending on availability, you go to the range and practice your gun, shoot it, and then dismantle it, clean it up, and put it back together. And I can tell you right now, some of the policemen you see, don't, they cannot even clean their gun. They've not cleaned it for a long time. They cannot dismantle it properly. And then, of course, they don't know the rules governing safety of a gun. Since we're well, talking about guns, I've yes. always wanted to ask you this. Uh, I don't see policemen in developed countries carrying the kind of long guns that, are, that ours carry. What no. happened to pieces? Why do we carry long guns here? No, Given the, the incidents of accidental discharge. It's a standard right? issue. Okay. The standard issue for the Nigerian police, AK-47. Mm. You know, uh, some of the officers will carry pistols. Uh, a Glock or um, revolvers, you know, on their waist. But um, uh, the standard issue is uh, the AK-47. And the AK-47, un un unfortunately, people, politicians think that when they have a uh, mopole carrying AK-47 and following them, they, they are protected, you know. And that's not true. Because he can kill you with that gun, mm. you know. And the way they handle it and swing it and point it anyhow, you know, there will be accidental discharge, especially for an untrained guy mm. who has not been trained for a very long time, uh, who forgot 
to put the, the, the arm on safety, mm. he could shoot anybody. They've shot their own colleagues, they've shot themselves. Mm. You know, so these are the things. Uh, when the NSAS protests began, there were talks about improving the welfare of the policemen. Mm -hmm. It was part of the issues. It was. In fact, there were you know, designs on social media telling us how meager the payment uh, was for policemen. But yes. then, just in a few days, it changed, and then we saw an absolute attack on you know, police infrastructure. And that also has been the pain of the federal government, that the international media uh -huh. hasn't really covered, did not cover the protest comprehensively, uh, did not talk about the number of police stations that were burned yeah. and the number of policemen that were killed, which, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it should be a robust reportage. Yes. Absolutely, there was an infringement of human right, but we should also report that policemen were killed. My question yes. now is, is this, but before I ask you, let's take, let's take Joshua's call uh, from Irewale in Ogun State. Good morning, Joshua. Uh, good morning, my brother. How are you? And the uh, comments of the season to you. I should have said. I agree with <laughs> yeah. Dennis. I really appreciate him so much. And uh, I, I just encourage him to keep uh, educating us on security matters. It's so, so, so good listening to him, so nice. You know, looking at him, I, I see the face of SSS, the way I used to know them, uh, or DSS, uh, whatever they were called back then. I would like to ask him what's happening to that organ of security. You know, people are talking about intelligence, but there's an arm of uh, 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 the, the police that is uh, responsible for that. These people, oh, when I was in school, I, they were really amiable. They, they endeared me to wanting to join the police. Absolutely. But these days, we don't hear anything about them again. Whether they are SSS or DSS, the intelligence community has just gone into some silent mode. I would like him to, uh, to, to address that part. What is actually going on? And going to 2021, as he's speaking there, to everybody in government, we need security from the point of allowing the people to take ownership of their security. Whether we call it community policing or whatever, what are we afraid of? Let's take ownership of our security. We've been doing it. Let's formalize it so that we can secure ourselves and have some peace in 2021. That's what I wish Nigeria. Thank you very much I for your contribution, you Joshua. Forward. Good to hear you always. Have you guys gone undercover? That's what he's asking me. But I'm sure <laughs> we saw you at the 8th Assembly when you invaded the National Assembly and also arrested some judges. <laughs> anyway. But after that, we haven't heard much. Um, the service had, uh, you know, is the most patriotic uh, service in this country. Mm. How do you mm. mean? Patriotic, more patriotic than anybody else. The army, the immigration, police, you know, uh, the SSS is the most patriotic. And I stand to be corrected. I'm sure the other agencies will not agree with you. They will better agree <laughs> because uh, they know. Okay. You know, uh, they know because, in fact, the SSS was in a position where uh, when there were all kinds of coups in this country, the military themselves were scared of SSS people because mm. they were the people busting them. You know when they commit, uh, when they try to do coups. Yeah. Now the thing is that uh, the, the the service has been good. The recruitment system, you know, equal number from each state, yeah. you know, has been recruited. Till today, I can tell you, my group that came in together, my cosmates that came in together with me, uh, except for those who have uh, passed away, yeah. we are still in touch, and no tribes or tongues differed because we were like brothers and sisters. But where are they in huh? the midst of all of this insecurity? You're yeah. going to answer that very shortly. Okay. But let's take Joseph's um, brief comment from Makodi. Good morning, Joseph. Good morning. Go ahead with the contribution, please. Good morning. Good morning. Joseph, we're with you. Go ahead, please. All right, we'll probably we'll get back to that. Yeah. Please, let's have you your... for discussing the security okay. issues in the country. And if you know very well, I have tried to 
Karena Well, you have to stop issues. listening to your TV <laughs> and just go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, there's issues. We might not be able to wait that long. Well, yeah. get back to us, Joseph, if you can, uh, without listening back to your TV. So yeah. where, where is the service? Yeah, so in all what, of this? what happened was that we have a very good service that okay. was also informing the government because actually you cannot run a good government without the input, the intelligence input of the security service, mm. okay? And that was going on. And then suddenly we have an interjection of politics, mm. politicians. Politicians came in there and then started to try to control the service, mm. you know? And because they are not independent, they have to listen to the politicians. And that is what, and one of those who are advocating that the security, including the police, should be made independent. The allegiance should be to the constitution of this country, not any politician. You know, such a, in such a way that if any politician, a governor, or you know, any top government official, including the president, goes contrary to the law, he will be called to investigation. And then they enforce the constitution. Exactly. But right now, it is, you cannot investigate your boss, mm -hmm. you know, because the constitution does not allow that to happen. Recently, we, um, the DSS released um, a statement asking people to um, be careful, be careful mm -hmm. and that there are certain plans um, attack during the Utah. Let's take Reverend Dominic's call from Ali Mosho. Good morning, Reverend. Good morning, uh, Femi. Good morning. Good morning to your guests. Good morning. Please, I would like this, uh, our guests to solve this uh, mystery that has befell us in this nation. Femi, I thought immediately we brought back these boys, whatever they are, that we could have, you know, fight back. There was no fighting back. They are taking their money. <laughs> Number two, is there anything wrong with us in Nigeria? These boys came back with trucks of vehicles. How did they move them from the school to the point of Zamfra State? Mm -hmm. yeah. Zamfra, Tassana State is under control of by emergency. Those two states is emergency control of army, police, access. How did they move them? Nobody has told us oh, they move with the bike so that it can repeat again. Now we brought them back with the vehicle and we don't know how they went to that place. Number two, I thought when we brought them back, we had to pay them so that we can't have casualty. Other nations could have go and hit them badly. We pay somebody that money, somebody collect that money, somebody negotiated. I want to tell my brother there, the problem of security in Nigeria is not what I call criminal issue. It's a state manage. If it's not state manage, how do people take money from us and take our children and have the infantry to repeat it again because nothing happened? What kind of a state is this? And we have moved on. And somebody said, which is insulting to all of us, it's a credit to Mr. President. In a same society, somebody must have resigned. In a same society, somebody will be queried. In a same society, somebody will ask, how do you leave two children so vulnerable? But today, it has become a credit. It has become a congratulation. Well, I don't sympathize again to Nigeria. I congratulate us to all our this shame we are in. But Nigeria will be good one day. Everybody will give account of himself. But my pain and my care is here. The way we are trending our children with Naira and Kobo, it's shameful. Good morning, Nigerian. Good morning, Reverend Dominic. Very angry, and I understand yeah. uh, where <laughs> he is coming from. Um, you know, you also just wonder, really, he mentioned resigned. People mm. do a lot of things here except yeah. taking responsibility they, to they the point of resign. Because yeah. you just ask yourself, how did you know, bandits make away with 344. Yeah. Somebody should have, you know, taken responsibility for uh, that. Even uh, mm. the Chibok girls. Yes. I think the first time it happened, mm. the government in power at that time was in self-denial mm. because they said it's not possible. Mm. Even, you know, I was discussing with some friends and they said, 290-something girls, mm. how many buses will take them? Or if it is pickup, how many are you going to put in there? But it happened. 
And most likely they were taking on foot away from wherever. Let's take a commercial break. When we return, <laughs> we'll talk a lot about this, especially the fact that people now assume that um, money exchanged hands in the oh, release yeah. of this boys. And um, the presidency said it knows nothing about one million yeah, well. per boy that is being peddled around. Let's take a break and we'll return with more on security in Nigeria 2020 in review. Stay with us. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news.